Hey everybody, uh, this is a little quick, very, very quick video solution to help you with question 9, 15, 12 um, in, your, uh, in your textbook collaborative statistics. Uh, the question is, um, and this is all based on question 9, 15, which you want to do problem parts 1 through 11 before you get to this point. Um, so, you've got a p-value in this one of about 20%. Uh, which is the only thing you need to know to help you answer this one. The uh, question is, does it appear the proportion of people in that town with these illnesses is lower than the general adult population? This says no. Remember, this is a big p-value. And the reason why that implies no is that the hypothesis we were testing, little p, the percentage of those in the town with these conditions, we were testing that it was less than 9.5%. The, the uh, null would be the converse of that, usually stated as equal to 9.5%. So, with a p-value of 20%, that's large. We call it large because it's over 5%. Since it's large, that tells us to believe the null. In other words, it tells us there's no reason not to believe the null, if you want to use a double negative, which is technically proper. So, there's no reason to think that this is true, so we fail to reject, if you use the, the lingo, or you have no reason not to believe that this is true. Now, that's the question I asked you, and that's the why or why not. I also said, indicate which error you can make. A big p-value that you act properly on always is a potential type 2 error. Now think about what that means. That's a false, a false negative. Because you said it does not appear that these people in the town have the condition at a lower rate. You could be wrong. You could say they don't have the condition at a lower rate when indeed they do. So that's the potential error as a type two. Type two because of the big p value acted, acted on appropriately, potential type two error. Hope that helped.